Hi, I'm Murphy, and this is my channel, Murphy's Every Whim, where I talk about books, because that's what I love to do. I love to do it a lot. And lately, I haven't had anybody to talk to about books, and so I'm going a little stir-crazy. Today, I want to talk about my plans for November. My plans for November, both reading books-wise and what I'm going to be doing in November, because November is the month of my 65th birthday. Yes, I've already signed up for Medicare, got that all taken care of. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling very old. Um, when I watch videos on YouTube and someone says something like, at one time, people used to do such and such. Uh, I think the one I saw the other day was, at one time, in the Catholic Church, the priest faced the altar instead of the people. And I made it sound like, oh, this is a long time ago. Well, I remember <laughs> when the priest faced the altar. I remember when the Mass was in Latin. <sighs> So I'm feeling kind of old. But my sister and I have planned a birthday bash, a two-week vacation of things that we wouldn't do usually. <laughs> and so I'm not going to talk about all of that. I am sure I will have videos and pictures and things later. So, But for my reading plans for November, I have really kind of gotten into this having a, a TBR, having a to be read list for a short period of time. I didn't think I would ever like this because I like to read just whatever tickles my fancy at the time. I think that booktubers call that mood reading. But I've liked this having a list just for one month. And for the last two months, I've chosen lists that are way too long for what I can read in one month. And in that way, I got to read what tickled my fancy off of the list. But I felt like I was accomplishing something. I'm accomplishing, you know, like I'd chosen books for a, a reason. And this reason this month has to do with this book. 500 Great Books by Women. This is by Erica Bauermeister, Jesse Larson, and Holly Smith. And this book is A Reader's Guide. It was published in 1994. I really wish someone would take the last 30 years and write what, you know, the next chapter, you know, like the 100 Great Books by Women in the last 30 years. I think that would be fabulous. But until they do, I will just live with this. This book is different than this mammoth book. A Thousand and One Books You Must Read Before You Die. In this, they say this isn't a must read, it's a guide. It's divided by topics. And within those topics, there's a list of usually about 10 to 15 books for each topic. And the authors and other contributors have written a small blurb about the book. Then there are a lot of indices indexed by location and indexed by author, by title, by uh, books about people of color. I've had this since 1994. I'm really disappointed that I've only read about 10% of the books in here. And for that reason, November is a month that I'm going to read books out of here. And I've made a list and I have obtained or gathered up the books. I chose 11. I am not going to read 11 books uh, some of these are a little on the beefy side. Some of them are quite short. I'm not going to read 11 books, but I have 11 books to choose from. I'm actually going to pack them up and take them on our birthday bash. 
and the books are The Autobiography of Alice B. Toklas by Gertrude Stein. This is actually not an autobiography of Alice B. Toklas. It is an autobiography of Gertrude Stein, and uh, she just uses this to write about her life, and in particular her life as someone that she believes has really positively influenced the writing community. Um, Gertrude Stein is a little on the conceited side. I've read that this is, for Gertrude Stein's works, one of the most accessible. So I'm really interested in reading it. I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't look like it's typeset all that well. The Dollmaker, and this is by Harriet Arno. I've had this book for a long time. In 2001, I took a course by correspondence. I took a course on Appalachia, and this was one of the optional reading. And I actually went and got as many books off of the optional reading list as I could, and I read a lot of them, but I never read this one. It's pretty long. This will take a while, but this is about a woman whose family had, because of World War, somewhere, one of the two World Wars, I can't remember which, her family has to move from Appalachia to Detroit. And she's a talented doll maker and is really tied to the land and her family. And now she's in Detroit working in a factory. And so it's about the choices made in a life. My Brilliant Career by Miles Franklin. I think I have seen the movie and I'm thinking that that image on the book is from the movie. Uh, but this is set in Australia. It was written by Stella Marie Sarah Miles Franklin under the pseudonym Miles Franklin. And it was written when she was 16. And it's about her life in the outback and then it, at a time when uh, they were not prospering. So she was in poverty. And then she also spent some time at her grandmother's estate in more luxurious setting. And she has to decide, this is also about choices. She has to decide um, whether to get married, have a life of comfort or to be true to herself and do what she wants to do. It was both popular and criticized in Australia at the time it was published. And then it was republished again in 1966. Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. And this book came off of He Who Caters to My Every Whim's bookshelf. He had had it on his bookshelf all the time we've known each other, which is 30, 32 years. And, um, but this is about the devastation of using chemicals that were untested on, uh, in agriculture and how that affected animals and birds and humans and the soil. And it's a classic. And I wouldn't have put it on a list to read except that I had I had seen a video by a booktuber at, whose name I can't remember, but I'll put on the screen, who said that it was a good read. And so because of that and because it is a classic, I've put it on my list for November. Strange Fruit by Lillian Smith. And this has been on my shelf for a long time. The physical book is quite old. It has an inscription in it from April 19th, 1944. I love layouts like this in a book. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out on this picture is uh, downtown and then the not so nice area of town. This was published in 44, but it's set after World War One, and involves and so, you know, 1922-ish, it involves 
an interracial couple in a Georgia town. And not only are they an interracial couple who are expecting a baby, in, an, in a Georgia town in early 20th century, but there's also been a murder of a white man purportedly by someone in the black community. And so this is Strange Fruit is all about racial tensions. Cold Comfort Farm. And this is by Stella Gibbons. And I love the cover. Oh, hmm. um, I was looking at the price. I don't think that's the price I paid for this used book. The, uh, I love the cover. It's got and uh, both the front and the back cover have uh, little synopses of of characters, for instance, Aunt Ada Doom saw something nasty in the woodshed. Seth, a prime specimen of manhood. So Cold Comfort Farm is a witty, irreverent parody of works by Thomas Hardy and D.H. Lawrence. And, um, the synopsis said that even if you haven't read Hardy and Lawrence, you can still get something out of this, but that um, there's a particular delight for those who have read. I've only read a couple of Hardy's. I haven't read any Lawrence, so I'm, I'm looking forward to reading this. Princess, this true, a true story of life behind the veil in Saudi Arabia and it's by Jean Sasson. And this is a biography of sorts. So there was a, a woman in Saudi Arabia. Her name used is Sultana. The, the Sultana had journals and diaries and notes. And she gave those to Sasson, who wrote this as if Sasson was Sultana. And so it's kind of a biography, but written as if it were an autobiography. So another one of these. I didn't realize that Sasson had written quite a few of these books and it's really a series. I'm kind of disappointed in that, but I'm still interested in the book. Daddy was a numbers runner. I always say this wrong. Daddy was a number runner. And this is by Louise Meredith. And this is set in 1930s Harlem. And it's the story of Francie and when she's 13, growing up in Harlem, having to deal with the fact that her father never has a legal job and her mother's working cleaning other people's houses. Francie has to you know, go to the grocery or go to the grocer and buy things on credit. Sometimes she has to fight off the butcher and other people who want to feel her up because they feel like it's their right. But sometimes she lets them because then she can get something extra from them, some extra meat or whatever. This book is about uh, Francie coming of age in Harlem and learning her place as a woman in a black community. Weeds by Edith Summers Kelly. And this is a, a book about someone living, a woman who's stuck in a backwoods community through pregnancy and marriage and not wanting to be there, wanting to get out. And it's supposed to be pretty bleak. It's quite hefty. Um, but another one of these stories of a woman trying to be what she wants to be. I think I have to get pretty far back for you to see all of this book. This is Libby. The Sketches, Letters, and Journals of Libby Beeman, recorded in the Pribilof Islands, 
1879 to 1880, as presented by your granddaughter, Betty Johnson. And so the reason it looks like this, it's supposed to look like a journal. Actually, I have a journal very much like this. The Pribilof Islands are in the Bering Sea, north of the Aleutian Islands. And Libby and her husband are stationed there by Rutherford B. Hayes to, you know, chart the island and study the island, see if it's of any islands, see if it's, there are of any benefit. And Libby has a job. She's actually a map maker. And she's the one that, <laughs> that actually petitioned Hayes to get them sent to this island. So it's really her idea. Her husband's not very excited about that. So this is a, a woman who knows what she wants as opposed to uh, other books. She actually is able to do some of the things that she wants. Her granddaughter, Betty John, has made a narrative out of the notes and letters and sketches and so on. And so she was criticized for that instead of just publishing them as is. But uh, it's still a story of a woman finding what she wants to do, grabbing it, and fighting to be able to do that. And the last of the 11 books, The Looney Bin Trip by Kate Millett. Again, I like a book with a spread like this, but this is a little more scary looking. <laughs> it seems like Strange Fruit should have been the scary one. This was published in 1990, and so this is a more modern tale. Uh, this is Kate Millett's memoir of being diagnosed psychotic and then being institutionalized, doped, given shock therapy, and effectively losing her civil rights. And so it's her way of making this thing that happens to people who are diagnosed psychotic that a decision based not on physical symptoms, but on behavior that causes those people to lose their civil rights. And so this is her call to arms. So that's the list of 11 books. I've, you know, gone through this list a couple of times. I wrote up little uh, descriptions of each, so I'd have something to talk about here. But it's not until I've looked at this, I've realized how bleak some of these are. Um, not sure how I'm going to feel after reading them, but by reading these, I'm making a little inroads into the 500 Great Books by Women. The That book, The 500 Great Books by Women, again, is just a reader's guide. It's not intended to be a book where you must read these. It has different types of literature, biographies, memoirs, novels, short story collections, uh, essays, all sorts of, of writing. And like I said, it's divided into topics. Uh, some of the ones I've had were about choices or identity or um, work, family. And so in within those, there's a list of books, a mixture of genres that were all written by women, and it's just meant to give you some things to pick and choose. And so that's what I've been doing over time. This is my reading list for November. Like I said, I've gotten to where I like these reading lists for a short period of time, but I pick more books than I need for that reading list, and then I can pick and choose as the month goes along. And for these books, I am hoping I can get four or five read in the month. Uh, October was an incredibly productive month for reading. And so being able to, instead of reading a lot of, of short things or things I felt like I had to read, diving into a few 
longer books instead of a lot of short books, I think would be a good thing. That's my plans. At the end of the month, I'll let you know how I did. I'll see you sometime. Take care. Today, I want to talk about I'd had it, I, I had my brilliant computer. <laughs> this is gonna have a lot of editing, a lot of editing. The Pribilof Islands, Island, Islands?